Hi there, my name is Kelvin, and um, I don't really know why I'm doing this video. I'm just showing uh, Pam, our student here, how to do CT. But I figured we'd record this at the same time. It's finally good that I can put my face to this YouTube video, which I've never had in any previous videos. But um, I'm going to show how we get started for our CT exam. Okay, assuming that we have already put our patient on the table. Okay, I'm just going to explain certain things in the CT scan about what we do, like certain techniques, um, what certain functions do in particular. Okay. So assume that we have our patient on the table already, and uh, we can have you, Andrew, hand to the table there, we'll just pretend that there's a patient there, uh -huh. which in this case there isn't. It's just a ghost. Okay. 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 We'll pan back here this way, okay? So the first thing we do on the CT scan, once we have a patient here, we hit new patient. This brings, it tells the machine, this is a new patient here, okay? We got a new patient on the table. Now, for this particular uh, the machine here, because we have a risk system, we have a patient schedule that we can actually pull from our work list to bring up the patient information. Because I'm about to click this, I cannot show you the screen because of HIPAA information. So, Andrew, I'm going to pan, pan to the other screen there. So, while I pull this up, okay, I'm going to hit, you guys can listen to me, hit continue update. I'm going to pull up the work list, okay. So, in this case, I'm going to pull up one of our quality assurance tests. Okay, now you can pan back, thank you. We don't want to violate HIPAA here, okay? This is just quality assurance. It's no real patient here. And you just make sure that the following information is put in. You know, you're going to have the session number if, again, you have a, you know, PAX system, uh, your patient ID, the name of the patient, you know, the gender, the, you know, birth date or age, either one or. Um, this gets filled in automatically, don't worry. You get, weight is not always necessary, but depends on your risk system, if it gets put in or not. Your referring physician, um, we'll just say Dr. Kelvin, which is me, okay, oh. okay, whatever. Uh, the radiologist is also me, why not? It's a conflict of interest, but who cares? Um, Operator is me, okay, that's my initials right there. And the history is, this is a test exam. Okay, very simple. So this is what we do next now. Now that we have all the information up, we have to pick a protocol to do, okay? Now on GE scanners, you just have to pick where you want to scan the anatomy, whether it be the, the head, we've got routine head, trauma head, all sorts of brain, you know, head angio, venograms. Um, we also can do extremity work, like hand, wrist, shoulder, extremity. You know, it just takes a lot of familiarity with your protocols. Of course, every scanner, I mean, every facility has their own protocols. So these are just a, just a little example here. But today we're going to do an abdomen and pelvis with contrast, just for the sake of this demonstration here. So once you bring it up, okay, our protocol says we have to do a scalp first. The scalp is to localize where we're going to scan. Basically we pick our, you know, how much of the body we're going to scan by looking at a scalp image. So right over here is just saying that this scan is the scalp, okay. This will occur first, this is number one, this is number two and this is the scalp plane. 90 degrees is lateral, zero is AP. This is the preset KV and MA for this scan. It's kind of like a floral image, basically. Um, and to explain the S and I numbers here, okay, what it's saying, now you might pan the camera towards me, okay? Now note that it says S60 there. Um, you probably can't see, it's a little too small on the screen there. It's saying that S60, now on an abdomen and pelvis, we place our Basically, our centering right here on the xiphoid process on the patient, right here. Okay. Now, what it means is on the patient's superior, okay, it's going to go 60 millimeters up, which is about six centimeters, somewhere about here, which is pretty good. And inferior, I, 500, so 50 millimeters down here. In, in theory, that should get well past. That, that should get past my pelvis. And that's exactly what. So. Sorry, 500 millimeters, 50 centimeters. Very simple. Now, it's very important when, and if you please stand back in, that's good. So it's very important to make sure your patient's orientation is correct because it'll go superior 60 millimeters and inferior 500 millimeters. And of course, if this is incorrect, if this is the opposite, let's say click the head, you want to flip it around because the patient's positioned differently, this will change it. So it goes superior and then inferior is this way. It always based it's always based on the patient's superior and inferior. Now, 
this is also very important. If you have the wrong orientation, your left and right will be backwards when you scan the patient. So let's say you did a CT head and you had this improperly flipped, which is kind of odd because you wouldn't normally do the head the other way, but let's, for the sake of the demonstration, let's say you did. If this was backwards, your left and right is flipped. The radiologist could potentially make a misdiagnosis based on the, the flipped image because your left and right would not be in the proper position. Now, let's pretend, let's scan this patient, okay? Now, I'm gonna run inside really quickly, and I'm gonna throw some artifact in there, okay? Um, unfortunately, we don't have any live demonstrations. Um, <laughs> All right, you So what I did there was I used the inner light centering, which is basically telling it where my zero reference point should be. So now that the start location, the end locations are now no longer red, it's telling you, you can scan now. So we're going to hit this confirm right here, okay? Now if you look down on the, on the keyboard here, this is blinking now, it's telling, it, telling me I need to move in the position to scan. It's going to go up to my superior level to scan all the way down to my inferior level. So I'm going to press that. Okay, good. And we're going to start the scan. Breathe in. Hold your breath. And that's a pre-programmed voice as part of our protocol. Now it's scanning. It's going to get our lateral in a moment. Breathe. Okay, I'm going to move it again. If you notice in a moment, your scalp images will show up on your other monitor there, on your right. Breathe in, hold your breath. Breathe. Okay. Um, for the sake of the demonstration, I cannot use the abdomen felt, you know, window to show you what's going on. I'm just going to use the lung window here, and you can kind of vaguely see it right there. That's my block, okay? So, all right, so let's just say that's a patient, okay? Come back here. Um, unless you need to redo the scout, you, should, you can hit repeat series to redo the scouts. But in this case, since we got everything, we're pretty good. So let's hit next series, okay? Now, this is what we call the, okay. This is what we call the fence, okay? I'm gonna flip this back because then we left it flipped the other way earlier, so that's the patient orientation, okay? So this is very simple. I'm not gonna go through all of these because this is for something a little more advanced. Adding groups means you can do multiple steps during the study to have it scan one part, come back up, scan another section. You can play with it, tweak it a little bit. So right now it's saying it's gonna be roughly scanning about 93 images, okay? So let's see how it determines that. Let's hit show localizer up here. Okay, now looking over at the other screen, let's bring back the lung window so you can see it. You can see that there's a kind of these little grid lines here, okay? This is where you plot where you want to scan. So let's pretend that the patient's lungs are up here, the abdomen's here, the pelvis is here, and that's the symphysis pubis, okay? So you make sure you enlarge it so you cover the whole patient. You have page down on the keyboard, okay? Page down, and then you can skip, and then you show your lateral view. Now pressing shift on the keyboard here, you can click the little X in the middle there, to shift it up or down to get the proper amount of centering that you need. You want to be in the middle of the patient. Basically, iso-center. I mean, sorry, you want to be in the center of the patient there, okay? Once you've determined where you want to scan, you can look at these other parameters here. Scan type, okay? We are doing a helical scan, which is continuous scanning, okay? Axial is step and shoot. Basically, you take a picture, make one slice, Move the table, take another slice, move the table, and so on. We're going to be doing helico. Rotation speed here, okay, basically is how fast we're going to rotate the tube around per second. It can rotate the tube, let's say zero, if I, at one second, one rotation 
per every one second. And you can do 0 0.5, which is going to be twice as fast. Two rotations in one second, okay? We'll leave it at, you know, 0 0.5 for the time being, okay? Just for the sake of the demonstration. So according to the scout that we selected, basically on our localizer um, grid, we're going to be starting at superior 46.5 millimeters and ending at inferior 478.5 millimeters, which is going to yield us 106 images. Thick speed here, okay? This is saying that we're using all of our detectors, which is 16 detectors, okay? The helical thickness is 5 millimeters.